Welcome back to our channel. And if you're new here, thanks for checking us out. In 1911, Procter and Gamble, P&G, launched the world's first industrially processed commercial shortening derived from cottonseed oil. P&G marketed it under the brand name Crisco, and consumers considered it a purer and more economical replacement for the natural animal fats, lard, and tallow. P&G produced Crisco by a process known as hydrogenation, which chemically alters the natural form of oils by adding hydrogen atoms to the oil molecules. In this video, we'll explore the development of industrially processed, so-called vegetable oils and how a certain processing step created an unnatural byproduct that was eventually found to be highly detrimental to our health. All that, coming right up. Today, the vast majority of oils consumed in North America are extracted from soybeans and canola seeds. Soybean oil is most prevalent in the US, while canola oil is dominant in Canada. Canola is an acronym for Canadian Oil Low Acid. Canola oil comes from a genetically modified version of rape seeds known as canola seeds, both of which are members of the mustard family. Rape seeds constitute a significant source of industrially processed edible oil and feedstock for biodiesel production in Europe. Compared to rapeseed oil, canola contains less erucic acid, which has been shown in animal studies to promote fatty deposits in the heart muscle. Soybean and canola seed oils are deceptively marketed as vegetable oils to make them sound more healthy. But these oils have a higher ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids than is considered ideal. This can contribute to inflammation and various chronic diseases. Ideally, a balanced intake of omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids is recommended. Fish oils are rich in long-chain omega-3 fatty acids, EPA and DHA, which have been shown to provide significant health benefits, including anti-inflammatory properties, cardiovascular health benefits, and support for brain health. Soybean and canola seed oils are present in many widely consumed processed foods. Processed foods that contain these oils include, snack foods, many chips, crackers, and other snack foods contain industrially processed oils. Salad dressings and mayonnaise, industrially processed oils are often a primary ingredient in these products. Processed meats, items like hot dogs, sausages, and deli meats may contain soybean or canola seed oils. Baked goods, cookies, cakes, pastries, and other baked goods often include industrially processed oils. Fried foods, many fast food items, such as french fries and fried chicken, are cooked in soybean or canola seed oils. Margarine and spreads, these products frequently contain soybean or canola seed oil as a key ingredient. Sauces and condiments, various sauces, dips, and condiments use industrially processed oils. According to Statista and the Helga Library, U.S. annual per capita consumption of industrially processed fats and oils increased from an all-time low of 11.2 pounds in 1961 to 105 pounds in 2020. This corresponds to a more than ninefold increase over the 59-year period from 1961 to 2020. The National Chicken Council's 2021 report showed that total per capita meat and fish consumption increased by 35.8% over the same 59-year period. But this pales compared to the massive increase in per capita consumption of industrially processed fats and oils over that same period. This change represents a massive shift in America's dietary landscape. Demand for soybean oil is driven primarily by the demand for soybean meal, which is the protein-rich non-oil portion of crushed soybeans. Most of the soybean meal, about 98%, is fed to livestock as a protein source. A minor amount, 1%, is used in food formulations for people. There are numerous steps in the industrial processing of soybean and canola seed oils, but probably the most detrimental of these steps is partial hydrogenation which is performed to extend the oil's shelf life by making them less prone to oxidation. Partial hydrogenation produces trans fats which are linked to a plethora of health issues. Trans fats are a synthetically altered version of the naturally occurring cis fats. The chemical composition of trans fats is identical to that of cis fats, but the position of hydrogen atoms in trans fats are on opposite sides of the carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond, while in natural cis fats, the hydrogen atoms are on the same side of the double bond. You might ask, why does this seemingly small difference matter? Well, this reconfiguration of the hydrogen atoms in trans fatty acid isomers adversely affects the human body on a cellular level. It hinders or blocks numerous cellular functions ranging from energy provisioning to to prostaglandin production. In May of 1978, Mary Einig, a nutrition researcher at the University of Maryland, 
published a paper that questioned the safety of trans fats based on gaps she found in the data that ostensibly defended trans fats, but it would take more than three decades for this life-saving information to gain widespread acceptance due to strong pushback from powerful, well-funded lobby groups protecting the financial interests of the shortening and margarine industries. The Federal Drug Administration finally decided in 2015 that trans fats were no longer generally recognized as safe or grass. As a result, they've been banned from food products since June 18, 2018. Thanks to Aenig's courage, determination, and persistence, it is now widely accepted that consuming trans fats raises a person's risk of developing cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and is highly inflammatory, which can lead to several other chronic metabolic diseases. For more than a century, the steady infiltration of PHOs into our food supply has brought tremendous convenience to our lives by significantly reducing the need for manual food preparation and cooking. But in light of the resulting obesity epidemic and the accompanying explosion in cases of chronic metabolic diseases, the question we should ask ourselves is, has it been worth it? Thanks for joining me today. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this. Have a great day.